Hi, everybody. This is CT is Us Quiz for November 2024. I have 10 excellent cases to share with you, so let's get started. The most likely diagnosis in this case of a 50-ish year old male is, well, you can see a solid mass with calcifications and some vascularity involving the body and tail of the pancreas. Although it's a male, it could be a spend tumor. It's the wrong sex, obviously, and the patient's about 30 years older than a typical spend tumor, but it could be. Serous cyst adenoma, sometimes they're solid, but then they have vascularity, and I don't see that here. I don't like that. It could be an adenocarcinoma, but usually we do not see calcifications, and I do not see evidence of a pancreatic duct. Neuroendocrine tumors, on the other hand, can sometimes not be that vascular, but can have punctate calcifications. So this is a tough case. We all know this is a tumor that's going to be biopsied and likely resected, but the slight enhancement and the punctate calcifications make the diagnosis a neuroendocrine tumor of the pancreas. A really nice case. The least likely diagnosis in this case is, well, what do we see? A one centimeter mass enhancing gastric wall. What could this be? Glomus tumor is a really good thought. That's a possibility. Glomus tumor is usually a submucosal, but they're vascular. Ectopic pancreatic rest, more commonly in the antrum and proximal duodenum, but can occur anywhere in the stomach, and they're typically vascular. Neuroendocrine tumors of the stomach can occur. They can be small. Gastric polyp can look like this, yes, but gastric polyps are typically either soft tissue density or hypovascular. They're not hypervascular. This, in fact, was a neuroendocrine tumor, but the correct answer is, for the least likely diagnosis, a gastric polyp. The most likely diagnosis in this patient is, well, what do I see on axial and volume-rendered 3D coronal views? There are multiple masses in the stomach. They're polyps. They look like polyps, but they're low attenuation. So this is not a gastric adenocarcinoma. Sometimes you're going to have polyps and one of them becomes malignant, but then you're going to see a solid mass. Familiar polyposis is a possibility, but small bowel and colon is still there. FAP does have uh, gastric polyps, including gastric adenocarcinoma. Just tumors can be multiple, but they're solid, but usually they're single and not so small. This was polyps. These were fundic gland polyps. They're benign lesions, commonly occur in the gastric fundus, and a very nice example of them. This case also reminds you to distend the stomach in every patient. If the stomach was not distended with water in this case, we never would have seen the masses. The most likely diagnosis in this case, we see large bilateral adrenal masses they kind of maintain the adrenal shape. Mets can be bilateral, but not this appearance in terms of shape. Adenomas, these are too solid for adenomas. And pheos are vascular typically, usually not this large. And surely to have two large adrenal masses that were pheos, about 10% of pheos are bilateral. Usually it's syndromic, but they're smaller. So with large bilateral adrenal masses and this type of adrenal shape, this is a classic appearance for primary adrenal lymphoma. Primary adrenal lymphoma is rare, but here's one of those cases. In this hypertensive patient, the best diagnosis is, now any other patient, I see a bladder mass like this, it's a transitional cell carcinoma. You could consider a bladder polyp, you could consider TCC, you could consider a squamous cell of the bladder. You can think of a lot of things, but because I gave you hypertensive and because the mass appears to enhance, that's classic for an ectopic pheochromocytoma in the bladder. What a great case. And we see these occasionally. A good rule I tell people, if you're looking for a pheo and the adrenals are normal, make sure you scan through the pelvis so you can exclude the possibility 
of an extra adrenal theo at the organ of zircocondyl, or perhaps even in the bladder. In this patient with abdominal pain, what's the best diagnosis? There's a mass in the root of the mesentery that's almost entirely calcified. If this patient had lymphoma, treated lymphoma would be a consideration. Carcinoid has more of a desmoplastic reaction. In addition, the entire mass here is nearly calcified. With uh, a, a carcinoid, you don't see that much calcification. TB is a possibility, but TB is more common involving the terminal ileum, and you would have multiple punctate calcifications. This is a very nice example of a mass in the root of the mesentery, densely calcified, and with sclerosing mesenteritis, often a very challenging diagnosis. The least likely diagnosis in this case sent to PMDC is. So the first thing to recognize is PMDC is Pancreatic Multidisciplinary Conference. This patient was sent without a biopsy, but presumed pancreatic cancer. Now the reason this is not pancreatic cancer, this is a large mass, but you don't see intrahepatic duct dilatation to any degree. If the patient had a pancreatic mass, which was an adenocarcinoma, you would see duct dilatation both in the common duct and pancreatic duct. So what things occur in this region? Well, one is gastric tumors. Now, maybe it would hang off the patient's stomach, and it's a gist tumor, probably more likely a duodenal gist tumor would be a good thought. Occasionally, duodenal carcinomas can be bulky. Again, no duct dilatation. And metastasis from melanoma will commonly or not uncommonly occur in this region. So those are all good possibilities. The one thing this is unlikely to be is pancreatic adenocarcinoma, and that is the least likely diagnosis. Excellent case. The most likely diagnosis in this case, there's a large mass in the left atrium extending near the junction of left atrium and right atrium. Lymphoma of the heart typically is around the pericardium invading in. Melanoma can involve the pericardium, can also involve the chambers, but typically will extend in along the pulmonary veins, which is not the case here. A thrombus is always considered, but this is too smooth. Thrombi are typically more irregular and typically not that large. This is a beautiful example of a classic case of a left atrial myxoma. Occasionally they calcify. The left atrium is the most common location. The most likely diagnosis in this case, we see a mass involving the terminal ileum. Could be an adenocarcinoma, could be a carcinoid. It's not a Meckels. Meckels can at times enhance, but they're usually more cystic. Lymphoma, it could be, though usually it's more bulky. But then on the PET scan, you see the marked activity increase. That's more common with neuroendocrine tumors than lymphoma or adenocarcinoma or Meckels. And so when you see these two together like this, this is a carcinoid tumor. A good example of having the PET help you out in the differential diagnosis. There's no other site of disease seen in this case. The differential diagnosis is all of the below except for. Okay, I see a cystic mass in the liver. It has some solid component. It's pushing on the IVC. Well, could be metastatic disease. The two most common mets that go to liver that are cystic are ovarian cancer and gist tumor. This, in fact, was metastatic ovarian cancer. Because of its septations and solid components or increased density, I could be thinking about a biliary cyst adenoma. They can have solid components. They can have septations. The one thing I don't think this could be is a simple cyst. Simple cyst, well-defined water density. If it has a septation, it's very thin, but the other areas of increased density make it unlikely. So the least likely diagnosis here is a simple cyst. That's the last case for today. Those are 10 cases. I hope you learned something. Again, the differential diagnosis at times is challenging. We're not always going to be perfect in all of our cases, but we need to figure out what the most likely diagnosis and perhaps what the least likely diagnosis is to help with patient management. And with that, I wish you a great day.
If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.